Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. It's Chief Meteorologist Brian Panovich. Let's talk about Hurricane Delta. First, we'll focus on where it's at, where it's going in the Louisiana Gulf Coast, and then we'll focus on the rainfall up here in the Carolinas. So first things first, let's show you the wide view. You can see Hurricane Delta is now emerging off the Yucatan Peninsula. It's weakened a little bit overnight because of shear, and obviously it's interacting with land, but it will likely re-strengthen as it moves back into the Gulf of Mexico. There's a little bit of good news as this moves north and west. We expect it to strengthen in the short term, but as it gets closer to the coast, there are signs that it should weaken a little bit. But I caution you, that's only for wind speed. That does not impact storm surge or rainfall. So that's a, that's a big concern for Louisiana. Storm surge is our number one concern with this system. So let's show you the wider view first. This was the 11 a.m. advisory, just got it in. You could see shifting a little bit to the west. So this is putting central and southwestern Louisiana more in the cone and now parts of southeast texas and you can see it becoming a remnant low in tropical depression moving up into the ohio valley so there has been a subtle shift to the west there that's noticeable there's no way to really beat around that and here's a close-up view of the track and again i will caution you don't look at the middle of this track the storm could be from here to here and the cone only shows where the center is going to go not where the impacts remember this storm is actually going to get wider and bigger as it moves north so the impacts will stretch from the center far out so we could see impacts all the way along here even if the center is somewhere in here so if you're over here you're going oh i'm not in the cone no big deal but remember storm surge waves wind rain still going to hit those areas the cone is the center remember the center is a very tiny point on the map these storms are three four hundred miles wide sometimes sometimes 600 miles wide so don't read too much into that and remember that's what you're looking at with the cone as it gets inland it's going to move over the ohio and tennessee valleys that will put the carolinas in the moist flow around it um, so i do expect we will see some you know rainfall here but i will tell you i think the rainfall amounts are going down a little bit and i'm really more concerned with the mountains because they will lift the air and cause additional uh, rainfall so what's steering all this well let's look at the spaghetti plots uh, you always like to see these and you can see they're fairly consistent the good news is is we've had the hurricane hunters in there on and off for the last couple of days we also ran an upper air mission over the gulf with a gulf stream up around the jet stream level so 20 to 30 thousand feet and it's uh, basically collecting upper air data over the Gulf. And also all the locations in the southern United States launched an extra weather balloon uh, the last couple of days. So we're getting better data for steering currents. So I, I'm really thinking the, the, that looking at the data today, we've got a pretty good handle. And there has been a shift. You can see the guidance is kind of unfortunately honing in on around Lafayette to Lake Charles. And Lake Charles doesn't want anything to do with this, but um, bad news for Louisiana because this is an area all susceptible to big storm surge. Remember the surge will be high all the way to Mobile Bay. So even with the landfall here, water is being pushed here. And the thing to remember is storms move towards the coast. The winds might be weakened, but the, the water does not. Um, once you push that water like a bulldozer, it, it's got to go somewhere. It's like a wave in the pool or a wave in your bathtub. Once you slosh the water, that wave goes on. That energy continues to move towards the coast. So the surge doesn't really dissipate even as storms weaken. Now, obviously, a strengthening storm would keep that surge and continue to build it. But once the momentum's built up out here in the Gulf, and I've seen this with a lot of Gulf Coast storms, if you got a big storm out here for a couple days and it weakens on approach, that water's still built up. So it's still heading in. So let's talk about the forecast track of this, and I'll show you some of the guidance. First things first, let's look at the water vapor loop. The steering currents are pretty straightforward. I mean, we've got a ridge here with a dip over the Great Lakes. We've got a ridge of high pressure building here, which is doing this. So the only avenue for this thing is really to do this and kind of go like that. So we can kind of see the path ahead. This is actually a pretty straightforward forecast track. It's just about little nudges to the west or east as it moves uh, towards the coast so one of the pieces of guidance i'm going to rely heavily on is the gfs model which sounds weird but this year the gfs has been nailing it the hurricane center has been leaning heavily on it we still look at the european and the no gaps and the uk met a lot of guidance but um really like the way the, the uh, u.s model has been handling tropical systems in particular it's been doing a really good job with delta here so we'll put this into motion we'll go through today today is the seventh we'll go through tomorrow afternoon we'll stop this about two o'clock tomorrow afternoon a couple things to note here we've got um, high pressure over the great lakes in the ohio valley it's supplying northeast winds obviously warm moist flow here we've got a little boundary that's going to set up here it's kind of a 
a, a moisture boundary, if you will. And as we go through time, you'll see we'll go through tomorrow, tomorrow evening. We'll go into Friday morning, um, and I'll stop this Friday afternoon. So it looks like landfall sometime Friday, maybe afternoon or evening. Notice the high pressure here off the mid-Atlantic. Here's our low pressure. So the moisture we're going to see is kind of weird. Some of the moisture is coming from here, but with this big ridge of high pressure, we're actually getting moisture coming in from the Atlantic as well. Um, and as that starts to interact with the mountains, we're certainly going to see some rainfall. Yeah, and any time you get that flow going into the mountains, you tend to get uh, drizzle, mist, and light rain, even though it doesn't show up well on the guidance. So we go through Friday night. Um, let's stop this Saturday morning. I'm going to stop this at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. So here's Saturday morning. Notice not a ton of rain across the Carolinas, but trust me, there will be rain in the mountains because we've got low pressure here, high pressure off the east coast. This is spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. This is spinning clockwise. So anywhere in the mountains, you take this low level moist flow, you hit the mountains, it lifts the air. It creates clouds and showers. Not real heavy rain initially, but lots of light rain, mist, and drizzle. So Saturday is going to be cloudy, drizzly, misty, kind of rainy, but probably not the worst of the two days. Um, as we go through time, watch as this moves up into Tennessee and Kentucky, it starts dragging this plume of deeper moisture. You see this plume of moisture which extends down to Florida. This is going into Friday, so we'll go, or I mean Sunday, excuse me. Um, so we'll go into Sunday morning, and look at that Sunday morning, I mean. We are just socked in with rain. And again, some of this will be light to moderate, some of it heavy. We go through Sunday afternoon, it's still raining, still raining Sunday evening, Sunday night, Monday morning, rain starts to slowly live out. We get up Monday morning, um, whoops, we'll start Monday morning again, we'll stop this right around 8 a.m. Looks like the rain's finally done. And then we go into Monday afternoon, it starts to dry out, could see a scattered shower. But if you look at the time frame, this is Sunday right there, I mean, that's absolutely getting clobbered, and Saturday not as rainy. So let's look at some of the, the guidance here as far as the amounts of, of rainfall. So we'll go through day one, which is today and tomorrow. We'll go through tomorrow. We'll go through uh, early Saturday. Saturday morning, you see the light rain, and this is indicative of that southeast flow. Uh, you could see the moisture will be coming in from the south and east, and notice how anywhere, any mountain, any elevation <laughs> facing south and east is likely going to see is likely going to see some uh, rainfall. So we're likely going to see that start to develop on Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon uh, into Sunday morning. So by Sunday morning, look at the rain lining up in the mountains. But notice across the Charlotte area, only about a quarter of an inch. Then we go into Sunday night and look at the rain really pile up. So Sunday night into Monday, and then we go to day Monday. Um, this is through Tuesday morning, and then I'll stop this on Wednesday morning. So you could kind of see the heaviest rain is going to fall in the mountains, mainly Sunday into Monday, and then a little bit into Tuesday. So seven-day rainfall forecast is about an inch and a half for Charlotte, but a lot of this falls, you know, on Sunday. But the mountains, I think some of this could be underdone. If you look closely, and I'll go in closer, this is the Charlotte zoom in, some of these southeast-facing slopes are going to see some significant totals here. You start looking at maybe three, four, five inches of rain. Look over here, you're getting into the four, four and a half, five inches of rain, especially down here. So that's what we're looking at, more of a Sunday event with this as this starts to um, head our way going into the end of the weekend. So again, just to recap, here's our system. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a hurricane that's going to hammer the Gulf Coast, but for us, it's looking like this is going to be a late weekend rain event into Monday. So maybe a little bit of good news for Saturday plans. It's not great, but we're definitely kind of leaning more towards a Sunday event and the totals overall coming down. So I don't think we'll see any wind in the Carolinas, if at all, just maybe 15, 20 mile winds. Severe weather threat looks very low right now. And the flood threat looks low for everywhere except for the southeast facing slopes in the North Carolina mountains. Of course, we'll have more updates today. Next advisory comes out at five o'clock and we'll be tracking this through the next couple of days. But enjoy the great weather now before we get to the weekend.